You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So, if you're me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So, the last place we left off, Rannick had let us out. We we're kind of exploring an area a little bit to see where we can use the bathroom. <laughs> it's funny. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let's jump right into it. Alarm Chan is nice and primed. Let's go. All right. Right. If it's just a leak, you can simply go here. He points to the side, and I look around in confusion. What? Here. Against the wall. I'm not pissing on your house. I have defiantly at the suggestion. What does it matter? I don't care, and the house won't mind. I stand still, not even acknowledging it. Duh, are you a shy peer? Is that it? He asks mockingly. I'm not a shy peer. Well then, prove it. A challenging smirk stretches across his muzzle and my mouth opens wide. What? Here, I'll show you how it's done. He's, oh no, he snickers and turns to the side, slowly undoing his pants. I quickly throw my gaze into the distance, shielding my eyes with a hand. No, don't show me anything! Wolf only chuckles as I hear a stream splash against the wall. Ah, dude! I mutter in annoyance, walking some distance away from him. Ha <laughs> You are a shy peer. And you're a shameless one! He knows how to make me feel uncomfortable, that's for sure. Eventually, he joins me, still tidying up his pants. Once he's done, I can see his arms swoop to embrace me, but I manage to evade his grasp at the very last moment. Nope, you're not touching me with those paws until you wash them. I didn't piss on them. Rannick scoffs at the suggestion. I'm serious. He laughs, shaking his head and giving me an amused shrug. As you wish, my lord. Just take to the toilet. Just take me to the toilet, please. I almost sound pleadingly, really getting more and more uncomfortable at this whole situation. The outhouse is a little bit further behind, he says with a worried tone. I'd rather no one see you. You sure you can't just muster the courage to go here? Is this the only privy in the entire village, or are you expecting people to be queuing up to yours in particular? Ha! Huh. Fine, fine. Cut the snark. Lilith shakes his head and waves at me to follow. We walk, we walk a few paces through the bushes until I can see a small shed nestled between the trees. Right. Here it is. Yep. I nod, pretty much having my worst suspicions confirmed. I look around, almost as if hoping to have that another toilet, more suited to my needs, materialize out of the blue. But I quickly realize there's no other way around it. Okay. Now, if you won't mind. I sigh, shooing him away with my hands. Hmm. I don't know about this. I'd rather stay close. Rannick! I'm not planning on an escape, and I doubt anyone is going to ambush me while I'm in the loot. I just want to have some privacy. A muster in resignation, the wolf gives me an awkward smile. Fine, fine. You're right. Sorry. He backs down slowly, and I take a deep breath. This is going to be the least favorite part of this entire misadventure. <sniffs> hmm. I try to pull myself back onto the ledge, but before I even know it, Rannick aids me in my struggle. My eyes widen as his massive paw cups my butt, allowing the wolf to push me upwards. Did he just fill me up? I dart my gaze toward back towards him, only to catch a glimpse of his cheeky expression as he rushes off into the distance. Stay put. His mocking command reaches me, and I shake my head in amusement. Scampering through windows feels so odd, but also kind of fun. There's something inherently childish about it, as if I'm a naughty kid having a forbidden sleepover at a friend's house. Once I jump over the ledge, I almost trip over the clutter that previously occupied it. I have half a mind to just return all this to the sill, but considering how musty this house is, I'd rather be able to leave the window open for a while. For the time being, I simply move it all to the cupboard. I'm just a guest. I should be rearranging things. When I place a leather-bound book down, I decide to have a quick peek inside. I flip the hard cover, curiously looking over the first page, wondering if I will recognize the lettering. To my surprise, it looks like a regular book with regular writing. Reese History of Freyfall. Brief History of Freyfall. Interesting. Ugh, a history book. Considering my circumstances, this is the last thing I need. It would be like reading the Chronicles of Narnia. I laugh at my own joke, putting the book away, only to have my heart sink immediately at the realization I have no idea why it was so funny. What's Narnia, anyway? Forever lost. Oh no, not this again. 
I quickly shake my head, not wanting to deal with another invasive torrent of thoughts. With Rannick gone, I don't have my safety net, and I cannot let this day drag on. I need to keep myself busy. I glance around to find something to do, and the first thing that comes to my mind is tidying up the place. It's clear Rannick doesn't spend much time in his house, but that's no excuse to live with so much dust. It's not healthy. I remember seeing a broom earlier near the fireplace, so I walk into the kitchen to find it. I also open all the windows, leaving the doors to the bedroom ajar so that the fresh air could run through the house while I commence my cleaning. While I, commence my cleaning. I grab the broom and immediately get to work of brushing all the dirt from the floor and gather up all the cobwebs dotting the walls and corners. Over time, I begin to collect a small heap which I only grow by brushing more and more dust from all the different nooks and crannies. As I don't see a shovel anywhere, I decide to use one of the dirty linens still bundled up in the bedroom. I lay it out flat in the middle of the floor and simply, and simply brush the amount of dust onto it. I then bring the corners together, effectively creating a sack. Once that is done, I simply walk over to the window and chuck, and chuck the dirt outside, flapping the linen over the ledge to dust it off. I rest myself against the wall, rubbing my forehead and releasing an exhausted sigh. This was a big workout, but just as I try to rest, the nagging sensation in my stomach returns. Nope, not today, Dark Thoughts. I won't let you overwhelm me, even if I'll even if I have to clean this house inch by inch. Holding the dirty cloth in my hands gives me an idea. I rush over towards the water bowl and decide to use the remaining contents to wash the floors. I simply dip the cloth and then rub it over the wooden panels. Slowly but surely, each plank regains its shine and polish. I almost thought this was naked wood, but it turns out it was only dull because of all the dirt and grime. The draft makes cleaning that much easier and pleasant, with cool breeze gently kissing my skin. I stop now and then to nibble on what remained from my breakfast. I don't know how long I spent on my knees cleaning the floors, might have been two or three hours, but eventually I end up in the bedroom, finishing the last panel. I stretch out, feeling the pain in the back of my hands, but also a sense, a sense of pride at the fruit of my labor. I use whatever was left inside to clean up the surfaces, dusting off everything with a damp cloth. I can see some stray wolves passing by the windows from time to time, taking a curious gander inside. I guess I just want a sneak peek at the human and I can't blame them. Had the roles been reversed, and I learned one of my friends had a werewolf inside their house, I would have done the same. As the afternoon turns into an evening, I admire my handiwork. The cottage looks quite homely now. And just on cue, I hear knocking at the door. For a moment, I wonder whether I should actually answer. That's when the familiar cold voice reaches me. Biglet? I sighed through a smile, quickly opening the doors. Got some food for you. The black male stands in the doorway holding in his paw a loaf of bread and a string of sausages. Thank goodness, all this work was making me quite hungry. Not to mention, I just lost my only source of occupation that allowed me to steady my emotions. Will you stay with me for a while? The black man regards me with a risen brow, clearly surprised by his suggestion. Don't worry, it's not an immoral proposition. I jest. I like some company. Now that everyone knows I'm here, it should be fine, right? Desperation doesn't suit you, Piglet. He scoffs, walking past me and entering the cabin. I hastily close the door as the, wolf as the wolf approaches the table and inspects one of the tankards. Might as well grab a beer if I'm to pup-sit you. He teases, looking at me expectantly. Sure, if there is any. I shrug, looking around the kitchen. Vulgar points towards a barrel standing in the corner of the room. Ah, your very own beer barrel. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. Guess Rannick's home is pretty well stocked up. He always stashes the good stuff. Volger passes me the bug, shoving it into my chest. I guess he expects me to fetch the beer for him. I just shrug and decide to play along. As I approach the barrel, I notice it doesn't have a tap, but I can see the lid has a handle on it. I lift it up and submerge the mug in the dark liquid. As I bring it back to Vol, he has already seated himself comfortably at the table, his gaze coolly darting around the house in mild amusement. I see Rannick has found himself a little den wife. Uh, wh what? I blurt out, blushing a, a blush appearing on my face almost instantly. It was extremely dirty in here. Mm-hmm. He croons teasingly, taking a gulp of the ale and sliding the bread and sausages across the table towards me. Seriously? I don't want to get allergies, and it's enough that there's fur everywhere. I can do without dust. What's allergies? He asks indifferently, catching me off guard. It's... it's... Fuck, how do I explain it? It's when your body reacts badly to certain things, like getting a rash or a stuffy nose. I propose grabbing a knife and cutting off a thick slice of bread. The loaf gives me a skeptical look, as I enjoy the wonderful aroma of freshly baked loaf. Dust makes you ill? He scoffs, taking another sip. Well, it can. Fur as well, but so far I'm fine. 
To be fair, I can't recall if I ever was allergic to fur or dust, but I'm not going to admit I cleaned the entire house because I'm slowly losing my damn mind. I was simply tidying up because the last thing I need is getting my allergies. The last thing I need is getting allergies. Especially since it's spring. There's plenty of pollen in the air. Bulger puts the mug down and drills his gaze into me. Flowers make you ill as well? Fuck me, might as well just roll over and die. I curl my lips, staring at the ceiling. You're not a human, you wouldn't understand. Do basemen even have allergies? I toy with the piece of bread, squishing the slice between my fingers. It's still warm and sprightly. I doubt anyone in Avalon would understand your nonsense. On that, we can agree. I swear, there's nothing more satisfying than a smell of fresh bread. It completely distracts me from Volger's jabs, inviting to take a bite and finally and inviting to take a bite and finally succumb. I gasp, feeling the crust crunch, crunch beneath between my teeth. The taste of the rustic grain immediately summoned emotions tied to some long lost memory. A more wholesome time, a time of happiness and joy. I'm in heaven. Doesn't take much to please you, huh? The wolf comments on my obviously on my obvious satisfaction with a slightly troubled expression. You have no idea how much I wanted some fresh bread. It's almost as if you read my mind. Actually, it was Rannick's idea. He looks at the window. Oh? Ever since he found you, he was learning about humans. Your history, customs, staples of your diet. I discreetly dart my gaze around the house, locating different books stashed in corners. Now that Volger mentioned it, Rannick doesn't strike me as a particularly scholarly type. He was doing his research while I was still unconscious. It makes me feel almost humbled. We don't care much for bread, it's pretty just prey chow, so there's hardly any around that hasn't gone stale. But now that you're no longer a secret, he asks for one to be made fresh for you. I blink, taking in what he just said. Rennick went to all this trouble for me? Huh. That's extremely considerate and sweet of him. But at this point, it's hard to differentiate between just his general kind-hearted nature and something more. Am I reading into things again? Probably. I mean, he did say he's not into me. Everything all right? The black male asks idly, as he takes another thirsty gulp from his tankard. Yeah. I smile, biting into the bread again. As I chew, I grab the knife and cut off a piece of sausage. I give it a quick sniff before stuffing it into my mouth. Only now I notice that the wolf has been avoiding looking at me for quite a while now. I almost choke, trying to swallow my food through a laugh. Ew, you have a mouth. You're disgusting. Dude, you stabbed me. Being an experienced butcher, I'm sure you've seen worse things than me eating. Wanna bet? He sneers teasingly, giving me a side eye. I just shake my head in amusement and continue with my meal. The sausage is nice, but a little too garlicky for my taste. However, I'm not going to complain about free food. All this is extremely wholesome and makes me feel warm inside, as if an echo of my past tried to scream through the shroud of my amnesia. I've had to enjoy a homely meal like I have had to enjoy a homely meal like this before. I just sigh. Relishing the sliver of a good company, of a good memory. We sit like this for a while, Vold simply finishing his ale and not saying much. He doesn't seem to be much of a talker, but I don't mind. His company alone allows me to steel myself against my nagging, any nagging feelings stalking the recesses of my mind. I just wish I had something to start a conversation with. Despite the bandage looking rather gruesome, you seem to be doing fine. Oh, yeah. I smile awkwardly, reminded that the dressing is pretty much red and crusty. Well, you did a good job, I rubbed my side to put him at ease. It looks worse than it feels, that's for sure. Vool adjusts himself, readjusts himself, patting the hilt of his dagger. Since you enjoy it so much, I could do it again. He gives me a satisfied grin. At this point, it's hard to tell whether he's teasing or being serious, but I decide to just laugh it off. One has to wonder if you're not into it, considering how you almost begged to, be, to get skewered. I roll my eyes, giving him a stern look as the joke becomes slightly tortured. What are you on about? The chief? He asks mockingly. I've heard Rannick's father nearly cut you open like an actual pig. The wolf snorts, loudly slurping the remnants of his beer while I wince uncomfortably. Yeah. I'm not proud of my carelessness. Had Verissa not intervened, I wouldn't be here. You dropped the ball, piglet. I told you to be careful. The male nods, giving me a patronizing look. I know. I'm just grateful Verissa stuck up for me. She didn't do it for you, nor she had any other choice. He shrugs, toying with the now nearly empty tankard. Had you been killed without her making her case, all of us would face serious consequences. I assumed as much. 
I sink in my shoulders, awkwardly trailing my gaze around the room. Somehow, I feel embarrassed as if I disappointed him. But you have more luck than brains. He snorts, noticing my discomfort. The little runt went straight for his dad. Had it been Tano, he'd go for one of the elders and we'd all be fucked. Perhaps you should tell that to Rannick. I mutter, immediate, I mutter, immediately recalling my conversation with the wolf. He seems to hold a grudge against his brother. Why shouldn't he? The pup is nothing but trouble. The black male scoffs in annoyance. He's still his brother. Half-brother, and siblings doesn't mean much to us. He waves his paw impatiently. Each of us is expected to have multiple pups, most of which with a different partner. So the only reason to keep track of all the blood relations is to not accidentally bugger one of them. He lets out a loud snort, as if the idea amused him. Yeah, Rennix told me as such. The way of life is definitely much different to what I expected. Why are you worrying about that pup anyway? He has nothing to do with you. I just worry. I wouldn't want Rennick to take it out on him. <sighs> Two peas in a pod. Black male scoffs, slushing the remnants of his drink around the cup. What do you mean? You and Rannick. He shrugs, taking the last gulp of his poison. Worrying about strangers who get you into trouble is exactly what started this whole mess. Then you know I'm right, because saving me was a kind thing to do. Kindness is what gets people killed. The black wolf nods towards the other tankard on the table. Are you going to have one? I look at his risen brow. I'm not much of an ale drinker. Yeah, sure. I enjoy beer. But I guess I can humor the wolf. Yeah, sure. Then be a good servant and fill mine up as well. I blink as he pushes his mug towards me, but decide not to make much of his tease. I walk over to the barrel and plunge the tankards one by one, filling them up to the brim with the dark liquid. It's almost as black as coffee. Phew, coffee would be great, but something tells me that it would join the likes of salt and soap, another frivolity to tease me over. I place the tankard next to the black wolf and he picks it up. Slante! He raises his mug, clearly waiting for me to clang mine into it. Slante! I oblige and we spill a little bit in the process. I cannot contain a timid chuckle as I sit back and take a sip. The bitterness of the brew hits me almost instantly. It's malty and rich, almost like roasted cereal. There's, almost, there's also a hint of floral sweetness to it that I cannot wrap my, my finger around. It sounds really good. Give me some. I smack my lips, licking off thin foam that lingered on them. It's like no beer I ever drank, that's for sure. If I drank any, that is. If I drank any, that is. Enjoying it? I think ale is an acquired taste, no? He, ri he rises his brow. Considering I never had anything like it before, only time will tell. I can see my comment catches him by surprise, and he laughs, shaking his head. Cheeky little piglet. He takes a long, thirsty gulp, all the while gazing at me, almost as if expecting me to match his tempo. Yeah, that's not going to happen, buddy, but I'm willing to at least try. I take another mouthful, barely even tapping into the contents of the oversized mug. That's definitely more than a pint, at least two times more. If you're going to sip it like a housefly, you might, you might finish before next full moon. He snorts as I swallow my drink. I huff an annoyance and take another, this time much deeper gulp. Forcefully chugging the ale might not be pleasant, but it is actually better than the lingering bitterness when I take my time with it. Speaking of, I look at his moonstone, finally having a somewhat natural seg into a proper conversation with him. Are all wolves born during the same night, Moon Brothers? Hmm? Like you and Rannick. I shrug, taking a bite of the sausage to get rid of the aftertaste. In truth, now the sausage doesn't seem that bad. It pairs well with the ale. Makes masks its bitterness, that's for sure. I look to Volger expectantly, as he takes his time with another gulp. He eventually lets out a sigh and rubs his, heel and rubs his lips. Why do you ask? Well, since you said blood relations don't mean much, I'm kind of curious as you two make a big deal out of the Moon Brother thing. How do wolves become Moon Brothers? You have to be born in the waters of the same moon well during the same phase of Aluna. A moon well? I ask cutting off another slice of bread. I watch as the wolf walks over to the ale barrel, helping himself to a third mug. It's surprising how fast he goes through those. I'm not even halfway finished. There's a shallow pool at the center of our shrine. It's lined with small stones and filled with clear spring water. He explains, sipping off the excess that began spilling from the mug as he retrieved it from the barrel. I think it's safe to say he enjoys the ale more than my company. 
The pool supposedly collects the moonlight, blessing the waters which are then are used for different religious purposes. Like birth? I look to him as he takes his seat. Among others. The wolf shrugs as he wets his lips again. I can see he's nowhere near getting drunk. It's almost like drinking water to him. I just have a suspicion that once he has his fill, he'll simply fuck off. I need to pace him a little, so I cut off a piece of sausage and push it his way. Heh. <laughs> he smiles at my gesture and takes a bite. How's it for you? I know, but they pair well with the beer, and it's plenty enough for me. Alright guys, I'm going to end it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Far Beyond the World. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!